NLP with Python. Now in the last video, we really kind of looked at how to install and get Book NLP up and running and a little bit about Book NLP. So for this series, I'm kind of making this Jupyter book, which will have when it's done about seven or eight chapters. I have as of this recording on March 8th, 2022, three chapters in draft form. It walks you through a lot of the stuff in chapter one that we covered in the past video. It goes through and talks about myself, the textbook, what book NLP is. I have a little bit more detail here than what I included in the video. It talks about why book LP is useful for parsing larger documents. Again, this is also some of the stuff is covered in the video some of the stuff is only in the book and it walks you through how to install which is essentially if you're using linux just do your traditional um, installation methods same thing with mac i believe i have somebody out testing that for me uh, on a mac book uh, and then also it has the video for if you need to install this via windows what this video is going to be covering is chapter two and all of this is found at booknlp.pythonhumanities.com there will be a link in the description down below. In this video, we're going to be really covering chapter two, which is gonna focus on a few different things. First, how to import book NLP. Second, how to actually set up book NLP uh, as a pipeline and the model parameters, and then how to run that pipeline. And if you don't know what a pipeline is, don't worry at all. I'm going to be covering all of that without issue on this in this whole video. So I'll be explaining all these terms as we kind of go through. If you want to follow along, you can look at the textbook. Now, one of the things I'm going to explain is that in the textbook, I used the uh, GPU on my computer. Uh, this is the graphics processing unit. It makes things compute a little bit uh, more quickly, in my case, roughly five to six times more quickly. However, for this video, I'm going to be doing everything on the CPU or the central processing unit because everyone has a CPU, not everyone has a GPU that can do computations. So I'm trying to make this as democratic as possible. Um, if you don't know if you have a GPU that's applicable, don't worry. You're looking at something that's probably going to be about five to ten times uh, slower to do on your CPU. But everyone has a CPU that'll work, so I think that that's kind of the best thing you should do for right now. And setting up a, C a GPU on a computer to do things like machine learning uh, takes a lot of time, uh, and it's going to be very machine-dependent, graphics card-dependent, uh, and then you have to get into the installation of which version of CUDA, which version of TensorFlow or PyTorch. There's a lot of complexity that I think will detract you from just getting in and using Book NLP. Now, the purpose of this video is going to be uh, to teach you how to create essentially the essential components of of book NLP, which are all these files. Now I've got everything stored in this repo in the subfolder data, and then that subfolder Harry underscore Potter, because that's what we're working with in this video, is we're going to be generating all of these files. A good thing about book NLP is really only maybe four or five lines of code. But those four or five lines of code allow for you to create a pipeline that will produce all of these files. And what we're going to see in the next video, which is chapter three of the textbook. So if you want to read ahead, go for it, because the these videos will be coming out on Tuesdays and a little bit slower than the, the book itself. I'll be explaining all of these uh, these files, the dot tokens files, the dot entities, quotes, supersense, book and dot book dot html file i'll be explaining all of these in chapter three and in the next video this video is just centered around essentially creating these files so that you can start kind of working with these and analyzing them in chapter four video four of this series so with all that said i'm going to kind of pop over here and let's just kind of jump right in so again like i said a lot of what i'm going to be doing here is going to be following the the actual textbook so just please do follow along uh, in code watch the video first then go back and try to do it yourself so you have a good sense about where we're going to be working towards so let's jump right in the first thing i'm going to do is i need to import book nlp so i'm going to say from book nlp dot book nlp I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more so you can kind of see all this uh, we are going to import and pay particular attention here to the capitalization of the B in book and the capitalization of NLP in book NLP. And if you execute that cell, again, if you've done everything in the last video correctly, everything has been installed, you should see something that looks kind of like this. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and hit rerun because it looks like 
when I tested everything out, all the code, I didn't actually uh, clear the memory. So this will go ahead and load up. If you see something like this, this kind of scary warning, don't worry. I didn't suppress warnings so that you can kind of see what you might expect to see. And you'll notice right here that it says using device CPU. This means that I'm using my CPU, my central processing unit. Again, this is the device that will be a lot slower. If you're using the GPU, your output will look probably something closer uh, to this, where it says using device CUDA. CUDA is uh, a special kind of installation that you have to go through and do so that you can leverage your graphics card to do um, really kind of more um, complex uh, linear, uh, linear algebra computations beyond the scope of this video. If, if your output looks like this and it says using CPU, that's perfectly fine for this video. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is we want to create kind of follow the documentation of book NLP that's laid out for us. That way we can kind of troubleshoot things uh, a bit more easily. So we're going to create uh, two objects. The first one's going to be called model underscore params, and this is going to be a dictionary. Now, it's always nice to kind of set up your dictionaries like this so they're a bit more legible. What you're going to do is have one key called pipeline, and this is going to have a value that's a string. Now, this string is going to be a comma separated with no spaces, kind of sets of all the different pipes that you want to use. Now, a good way to think about a pipeline in uh, computer programming is like a regular pipe that kind of pushes water through it. This is going to be a sequence of events that is done onto data. And it's important to get the sequence correct because certain uh, events, as we say, downstream or later in the pipeline require data from earlier pipes. So that a good way to think about it is just as a series of pipes where entity is a pipe. So this is going to be what kind of identifies and extracts the entities. Now, these are going to be useful for the next pipe, which is quote, which needs to extract the quotations and assign them to entities. So your quote pipe needs to come after your entity pipe. Supersense, a bit complicated for this video. I'm going to be talking a lot about supersense in the next video, but think of this as a very broad kind of way of extracting uh, data that's relevant to literature, such as events and things like that. Uh, event and coref. Again, I'm going to be explaining what all these are when we start tackling the files. Event is going to be for event detection, and coref is going to be co for coreference resolution. Essentially, when you try to connect pronouns to the... Um, to the antecedent or postcedent. Again, I'm going to be covering all that in the next video. Notice that I have a comma here with no space between each of these, and spelling is important here. Make sure that you've spelt everything correctly. I find myself misspelling supersense quite frequently, so if you get an error, that might be all the problem actually is. We're going to put a comma here because we're going to have a second key in our dictionary. This is going to be model, and this can either be big or small. If you're looking for accuracy, again, you can go to the book NLP uh, repository, which is linked in the description down below to get the most recent uh, benchmarks and accuracy metrics. Uh, big is always going to have a, a higher accuracy uh, across the board, both with precision recall and F score. Uh, small is going to be able to run more quickly. So if you're looking to just kind of do some experimentation in a class, then maybe use small so you can kind of do it on the fly. But big is going to be what you want to use for when you're trying to analyze results that require higher end accuracy. So that's going to be one object that we make here. The next object is going to be the book NLP pipeline. So to do that, we're going to create a book NLP class. And we're going to be calling in book NLP, which we imported up here. And our object just make it all lowercase here. Book NLP, all lowercase. Again, we're following the, the actual documentation. We're going to be specifying the language, in this case, EN, to represent English. Book NLP has plans based on the NEH grant to expand to more languages, including Russian, Japanese, and Spanish, I believe. I've detailed them all out and linked to that grant in the introduction, chapter one on the, uh, the book. So if you want to kind of go through and look at that, feel free to. It's under chapter one and just kind of what is book NLP. It'll go through and talk about uh, the plans to expand to different languages. So for right now, just do EN for English because that's what's supported. And the second argument for this class is going to be the model params that we just created right here. And if we've done everything correct, we can execute that cell. 
If it's your first time kind of running this and you haven't followed along with video one and done the proper installation, you might be getting some errors here at this point. If you are and you're on Windows, go back and watch video one on how to install everything appropriately for Windows. However, after a few seconds between maybe five and 15, maybe a little longer, depending on your machine, you should see something like this. This indicates that our start startup is successful. We have created the pipeline and loaded everything in and it'll tell you how long it took. In my case, I have a pretty nice CPU, so it only took 5.166 seconds. Yours might take longer, don't worry. Just let it do its thing and you'll be all right. So once we've done that, now comes time for kind of setting up a few objects. We're going to be doing three variables that are going to be all strings that will contain things from our input directory, our output directory, and our book ID. I'll go over each of these as we make them. So the first thing we're going to do is have input underscore file. And again, this is going to be a string. What this is going to be is it's going to be the location of the text file that you want to see processed. Now I've got two Harry Potter files in our repo. We've got harrypotter.txt. Let's go ahead and open up and take a look at it. And then I've got Harry Potter underscore uh, cleaned. And this cleaned file has eliminated the, the chapters, uh, titles and all that stuff. And it's separated all the paragraphs out with a double line break. So again, this is just a cleaner data that's going to lead to better results with our pipeline. Remember uh, the old expression, garbage in, garbage out. Data cleaning is the most important step with anything uh, related to text analysis. Make sure your textual data is both encoded uh, consistently as in Unicode and also structured as nicely as possible so that your ML models, your machine learning models can parse it well. So that's gonna be called, my tech input file is in the data subfolder. And this is going to be Harry underscore Potter underscore cleaned dot txt. And again, I'm following along in the textbook here under chapter two. And if you want to just kind of use this button here in the textbook, you can copy everything over and paste it into your local Jupyter notebook. Uh, but I'm going to go through ahead and do these all manually. We're going to have the output directory. Again, if you're using Windows, you're going to want to make this manually. This is going to be the folder in which all these files are going to be dumped. In my case, it's in data and then in the subfolder, Harry underscore Potter. That's where all these files are appearing. And so I'm going to go ahead and say data backslash Harry underscore Potter. And then the last thing I'm going to do is the book ID. This is going to be what is used to actually name the files. So if we go through and we look at the files, they're all called Harry underscore Potter dot book, uh, dot book dot HTML dot entities, etc. The book ID is going to be used to give this a unique identifier. So sometimes if you're trying to create these files multiple times on the same text, you might want to have a different book ID so that you don't overwrite the previous files. So we're going to say Harry underscore Potter because we don't care about overwriting them. And let's go ahead and create all of those variables by just executing that cell. And at this point, you have everything that you need to actually run the book NLP pipeline. So you're going to say book NLP dot process, and then you're going to pass in these three keyword arguments or three arguments. We're going to say input underscore file, Ooh, input file, there we go, output underscore directory, and book uh, ID uh, underscore, sorry, ID. And you're going to, and you're going to execute that. Now at this point, my computer is going to be making a lot of noise as the CPU ramps up. I'm on a laptop that's very noisy. I'm on a laptop that's very noisy. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and pause the video right here. I'm going to pop back in about 10 minutes. That's how long it took the first time when I did this test to actually process everything on the CPU. I'm going to pop back in about 10 minutes. And we're going to analyze kind of the output message and then wrap things up so that we can start analyzing the the files in the next video. And you're going to be seeing an output that looks like this. If you're looking at your directory, you're going to see files start populate, populating here uh, as it kind of creates all of them. It's kind of fun to watch. Go ahead. I'm going to pause here and pop back in about 10 minutes or so. Up. Let's take a look at this output. So what we're seeing here is the task being done and the time it took to perform that task. Now, what we're seeing here is spacey. This is going to be the spacey model that's actually run over everything. This is going to be used to get a lot of um, parts of speech, 
and, and things like this. Entity tagging is done both with, I believe, Spacey and a BERT model. I'm not entirely certain. I'll know the answer for the next video, though, I promise. Uh, quote attribution, this is going to be to create the .quotes file, where we actually have all the quotes from the text stored along with their uh, corresponding speaker. Attribution, name co-reference resolution, and just general co-ref resolution. So all these things took on my CPU, which is, I have to look up how many quotes cores it is. I believe it's eight or 16 cores. I can't remember now off the top of my head, um, but it took 630 seconds to actually do the all the tasks. Yours might take longer. I have a very nice CPU on my computer, but yours might take maybe more more akin to instead of 10 minutes, maybe 15 or 20, maybe an hour. And again, the time is going to also be dependent upon the length of the text. Harry Potter book one is a short text at only 99,256 words. Um, so your text, if you're working with something that might be from maybe 19th century Russian literature, it might be quite a bit longer. Uh, that's okay. It's going to take as long as it takes based on the text and your system. But once everything is done, you should be able to go into this directory, in this case, data slash Harry Potter underscore Potter, and you should see all of these files populated. If you have, then congratulations. You've just successfully for the first time run the book NLP pipeline over a text, you should give yourself a pat on the back and be very happy. But now comes the uh, challenging part of figuring out what these files actually are, what can, what's contained within them, so that you know how to actually analyze the data that you've just created with Book NLP, which is really where the crux of the whole um, output sits, and all these files, and then creating the scripts to actually analyze them and take these files from the structured data that they already are, which is as a series of, as we'll see in the next video, tab separated values or TSV value uh, files, JSON files, and HTML files. Being able to take all this data and convert it into something uh, useful that you can actually use to uh, get some results. Uh, based on your analysis, maybe for a particular paper, maybe just for creating a network graph. Really, the the worlds are um, the worlds open to you here with all of this data. So that's what we're going to cover in the next video. If you do want to jump ahead and read uh, kind of ahead a little bit, check out chapter three, the output files. I'm going to be going over all this stuff next week on Tuesday. But for now, go ahead and take a look at the chapter if you want to kind of uh, read ahead. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening. As always, thank you so much to all the Patreon supporters and supporters here on YouTube uh, with the membership program. If you get a lot out of the series, do uh, consider supporting it via Patreon or YouTube. I do all this stuff for free, and I have no intention of ever kind of monetizing this. I want this to be free for everyone who's a digital humanist that just wants to start coding. Um, like I said, everything here... Like I said, everything here, all the proceeds will go to buying me coffee just to keep me awake so I can do all these videos. Thanks for listening.